hosts, and welcome to this special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, the date is August 26, 2009. I would ask Clerk Deblaine to please read the roll call. Chairman Rowe. Here. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Jordan. Here. Councilor Lennon. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor Sherman. Here. Here. Thank you, Deb. Uh, please rise and join me in a pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank the, uh, the public for turning out to this meeting tonight. Little did I know that uh, the Appointments Committee's report would garner this much interest, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, Town Council reports and correspondence. Ann? Um, I just wanted to uh, mention that along with several other councillors, I attended the employee recognition luncheon last week at Fort Williams, um, that's for the municipal employees, and it was a really nice event. We got a window of, of good weather, so that was nice. And uh, I want to thank Deborah Lane and Bob Malley and whoever else worked to put this together and say that the, I thought the employees of this town do a fantastic job for Cape Elizabeth and its citizens, and I just wanted to thank them and to thank you guys for putting on the luncheon. Thank you, Ann. Um, I attended uh, the caucus for District 2 of Cumberland County about a week and a half ago, and the sole purpose of that caucus was to elect uh, members to the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, on which I've served up until this year. Uh, the two elected from our district uh, are Tom Coward, uh, South Portland City Councilor, and Matt Robinson, Gorham Town Councilor. Other reports and correspondence? Seeing none, uh, we will offer our first opportunity for citizens uh, to speak to items that are not on tonight's agenda. There will be two such opportunities tonight, but this is the first. If you would like to speak to an item that's not on the agenda, uh, I'd ask that you come to the, to the lectern now. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the town manager's report. I'll pass tonight. You'll pass. <clears throat> We will now review the minutes of the meeting held on October, t uh, excuse me, August 10th, 2009. Do have a motion? I move the approval of the uh, August 10, 2009 minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any errors, omissions, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? 7-0, thank you. Item number 127-2009, the Appointments Committee uh, recommendation and their report. I will look to uh, Committee Chairman uh, Paul McKinney for his report. Thank you, Jim. The uh, Appointments Committee met, and we um, met and interviewed many qualified applicants, but we only had seven positions to fill. So I want to thank everybody who showed up for those uh, interviews and who put their name in is interested party. The following recommendations were made by the committee. Uh, Richard Bauman, Bill DeSena, Glenn Kirstein, Marianne Lynch, Jean Ginn Marvin, Tim Thompson, and Michael Valancourt. And I want to thank all those other people who uh, participated to, uh, and I would encourage you to continue to look forward to for other opportunities because there will be many. Also, um, the chairman has selected da uh, Councillor David Sherman and Councillor Penny Jordan to serve on this committee as well. Thank you, Paul. Uh, item number 128-2009, bond, re uh, bond refunding resolution. Uh, Excuse me. Do we have to, uh, vote. We have to oh. vote to we, accept we, them? To accept so, so I make a motion we accept these recommendations as made. Second. Any discussion on the... Uh, on the report. Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Thanks. Now item number 128-2009, uh, bond refunding resolution. Uh, Mike, would you like to give some background on this? I'd, I'd be happy to. Uh, the town has, has borrowed funds at, at different times over the years, and we, we currently have bonds that were issued between 1998 
in 2008. Uh, the 1998 bonds, which were actually a refunding of some bonds that were issued in 1974 originally, excuse me, 1994 originally, uh, are, are eligible for refunding, as well as some uh, bonds that were issued in 1999. Uh, the, if you look at the current interest that's currently owed on those, those both series of bonds, it's almost 1.7 million. Uh, by calling the bonds based on current interest rates, uh, the net savings on interest is an anticipated $675,000. We'd know the exact amount uh, when the, the actual bids are received for the bonds uh, from uh, those interested in investing in them on September 29th, but based on current rates, that appears to be the savings. Uh, the savings, therefore, was about 40% of the amount that, that is currently owed. And those savings, if uh, this all goes through and there aren't any issues, the council approves it this evening, would accrue in part to the school budget and in part to the municipal budget, uh, because uh, some of it was originally school borrowing, some was municipal borrowing. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Ann? Mike, in your memo, um, in the, towards the end of the second paragraph, it says the savings in the current fiscal year would be about 70000 and the savings next year about 90000 Is that the savings for both school and municipality That's correct. together? Thank you. Other questions of the manager? David? And Mike, the term of the new bonds uh, will extend the debt out, presumably? No, no, same, same retirement dates. It, it's simply, you know, when, when you borrowed monies in 1998, 1999, the interest rates are up to 5.7 percent. Monies that you can borrow today, particularly a municipality can borrow today, uh, if, you're, if you're only extending them out to 2019, which is the, the latest we're extending out, some of these only go to 2015, and some, some of 2019, the interest rates are all under 3 percent, and they're, they're, in, they're mostly you know, in the lower two. So it's, it's really you know, a, a, an historic opportunity to refinance uh, old debt. And, and I would add that bonds in later years aren't callable this year. So it's, uh, even though some of those extend up to an interest rate of 5.5%, uh, they're just not available uh, to be uh, refinanced. Other questions? Discussion? Would somebody like to put a motion on the floor, please? Ann? I move that the council accept the manager's recommendation that these callable bonds issued in 1998 and 1999 be refinanced. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion. If, if I might, the, the, the minutes will reflect that the motion was the two pages. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. And to include the draft right. motion language in the next two pages. Okay. Ann? I would just like to say thank you to the manager for uh, working with our financial advisors and also to Pauline. Um, for helping figure this out. This is a significant amount of money which we will definitely need. Um, and it's great that we can save that. And I just want to thank the manager for his efforts. Ditto that. David? Yeah, and I would just like to note that we have certainly felt our share of financial pain in the municipal budget in the last couple of years in this low interest rate environment because of loss of investment income. And it's great to be able to take advantage of the low interest rate environment as well um, with this action. So I also commend the manager for doing it. That's a good point. Other comments, discussion? All in favor of the motion? Short to be unanimous. Thank you. Item number 129-2009, the Town Center Intersection. Um, what I'd like to do with this, uh, I'll first set this up with some background, uh, and then as permitted in our Town Council rules, we'll, we will we'll allow very limited uh, public comment. And then the Council will consider removing the item from the table uh, where it sits now and moving forward with its own discussion and or action. So as far as background goes, uh, problems at the town center intersection were publicly identified in Cape Elizabeth's annual report for the year 1968. Study was then recommended for the pedestrian crossing at the intersection of Shore Road and Ocean House Road, or Route 77. Debate about the intersection has been part of the town culture and its political uh, landscape ever since. 
Incidentally, 1968 was before any of our current town administrators or elected officials were on the scene, uh, so this is an inherited issue for us. Several professional traffic studies have been performed at or near the intersection dating from around 1984. Problems there have been identified over and over. Three of the more noteworthy studies, those of T.Y. Lynn International, 1990, Joy and Hamilton, 1999, and Wilbur Smith Associates, 2003, articulate in varying degrees of assertiveness that signalization is warranted in order to lift the, the intersection from its F level of service rating. In April of 2004, the Town Council, by vote of 4 to 3, authorized an application for funding for the Town Center traffic light. In February of 2005, the Council reaffirmed its commitment to the project by vote of 6 to 1. The project was also kept alive in bond issue discussions in 2006, 2007, and 2008, as the project was listed among the Town Council goals in those years. In December of 2007, following both a Saturday morning public design workshop and a public forum, the Town Council granted its go-ahead to the Maine Department of Transportation to proceed with design for the project. The design that is presently under consideration was advanced ahead of designs that would have either created a roundabout or that would have separated and squared off the intersections of Shore Road and Scottdale Road for three reasons. Number one, it addresses the level of service issue. Number two, it was minimally invasive on the current landscape. And number three, relatively speaking, it was the least expensive option that was presented. In November 2008, before giving final design approval and sending the project to bid, however, the Town Council held a public hearing and has twice voted to table further discussion, first until May 2009 and then until November 2009, in order to give intermediary passive measures a fair chance to prove themselves. Earlier this summer, however, the Maine Department of Transportation and PACS, which is the local public funding arm, expressed the desire for Cape Elizabeth to come to a decision as soon as practicable regarding its intent to use state and federal grant monies that have been approved in the amount of $350,000. Essentially, they've said to us, either commit to using the money very soon or risk losing it. And that's why we're here tonight. So I would... Uh, I would now, before the council considers, I would now offer the opportunity for citizens to speak to this issue. Um, as mentioned, we've already held a public hearing, uh, so comment will be subject to the town council rules uh, for items on an agenda at a normal meeting. S speakers should speak from the lectern and should first provide their names and addresses. They should limit comments to three minutes each. Comments should be confined to the issue at hand. Comments should be made to and through the chair and should not include personal attacks on town employees, elected officials, or anyone else for that matter. The decorum of the meeting shall be observed at all times and the audience is respectively asked not to make overt displays of pleasure or displeasure regarding comments as this can be intimidating to other prospective or potential speakers. Especially noteworthy here uh, is that according to council rules, a total time allotted for citizen comment on an agenda item is 15 minutes. So uh, with that said, I will now open the, the lectern to public comment. Hello, my name is Wire, and I live at Six Old Colony Lane. Dear counselors, Mr. Chairman, I hope that you will recall that I have contacted you in the past and attended many of the meetings about this issue. Uh, I am happy again to have another opportunity to provide you with my insight as a resident of Cape Elizabeth who lives off of Shore Road. I do understand the concerns of citizens who oppose the light. It is true that the cost of this project is something that must be considered. However, this must not, must not be used as the only measure when taking into consideration the installation of the traffic light. As with any project, there are clear benefits, disadvantages, and immeasurable factors. As our world continues to change, so will our town. Often during these meetings, it is suggested that by having a light, it will change the character of our town and destroy its rural feel. I have thought about this many times, trying to see this perspective, and have always come to the same conclusion. The rural character of Cape Elizabeth is not defined by the number of traffic lights. It is defined by the people who live here and how we interact with one another, our neighbors, 
and our environment. Although we live in an area of convenience, I remember summers with my grandparents in which we traveled Shanks Mare, or by foot, or on our bicycles to the library, the drugstore, the grocery store, the farm stand, and even to the beach. My parents, grandparents lived in Boston, and to me, they lived in a beautiful, peaceful countryside. We would pick up litter along our travels, visit with people sitting out in their yards, and when necessary, offer assistance by taking bundles in out of people's cars, dropping off letters to the post office, and even returning overdue library books to our neighbors, for our neighbors. Because we had these interactions with people, the environment, these expectations provided me, or experiences provided me with a strong connection to the community and made me appreciate and care for the places we traveled. This is the character of our town, and the traffic light would enable pedestrians and cyclists to safely navigate our town center. We can all present scenarios as to what could happen if our town light is installed. I am not an expert on traffic safety, but I know what will happen in my family if there is a traffic light. We will ride our bikes and walk into town more often via the wonderful Greenbelt Trail. More often, because we won't have to worry about how to get across to the library, to the IGA, or to the playground. We, this will reinforce my children's sense of living in a rural town, one where they can have a chance to meet and come to know business owners. This, they will then stimulate our local economy, because they will have the freedom to buy their slushies and candy and pizza in town, because when they, I know they will be able to cross through the intersection safely, and so I will say yes when they ask if they can walk or ride into the town center. This also puts the onus of citizenship on them because they will understand that the privilege of a visit to the town center is allowed because of the hard work involved in making a light a reality through attending town meetings, forming opinions, and looking for solutions. Last week was the easiest time that I had traveling through this intersection, and that was due to... Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Gwyneth. Mr. Chairman, hey. um, I'd like to request that the uh, chair ask the gentleman who is holding this sign of protest to put it away. I think it's disrespectful to the speakers. Um, I would uh, honor that request. If we could keep the signs down, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Next. Okay. <clears throat> Anton Wagner, 11 Todd Road, um, about a half mile down Shore Road from Town Center. Um, perhaps I can speak for all citizens on one item. We appreciate everything that this council does for the town on an ongoing basis, not on this particular matter. And we often don't spend the time to properly thank you. So on behalf of most of the citizens, if not all, I'd like to thank you for your hard work on this and many matters. I have followed the review process and I'm aware of the pro and con issues concerning installation of the traffic light. I can agree with both sides on certain items. Uh, based on several factors, I am opposed to this project not due to the loss of the rural character, because I agree one light doesn't make a difference. We have plenty of rural effect to go around, um, and I'm not uh, opposing it in order to stop pedestrians from using the crossing in town center. Unfortunately, up until this point, I don't see very many pedestrians. Having just come up Scott Dyer Road about a half an hour ago and drove to town hall, there was not a single pedestrian or bicyclist uh, at a time of day where you would think people might go to the IGA uh, or to the pizza joint um, at the town center area. Um, I feel that now is not the time to be committing town funds for such a project, whether or not there is current funding available, uh, or whether it's paid for by state and or federal matching funds. All of those dollars are our dollars. They just get into the checkbook to pay for this in a different manner. So this is all about money. We're looking at the total cost, whether it's a million dollars, or 20 percent less, as some suggest, we might be able to save some money. I would suspect that Maine DOT and other consulting organizations would always be in favor of further development, uh, because many government organizations, we've heard this recently about the feds, um, are successful only if they continue to prosper, grow, and propagate themselves. So I have to be careful uh, in listening to that um, side of the story, where they may have a um, predisposed um, position to move forward with projects of any type uh, in an effort to keep, uh, to keep busy. Um, they have not proven to my satisfaction that there is a significant safety advantage with this light um, as opposed to other recommended measures with lower cost and less impact to the area. I am in favor of changes, but not the light. Um, 
Having passed that intersection thousands of times, I can firmly state that there has never been a significant delay from any direction as far as I'm concerned. Five to ten cars max is what I have seen in some eight, um, eight or nine thousand crossings at the intersection. Um, I do not consider that significant and it occurs rarely. For those that are impatient, I question what's the hurry and I would suggest that by leaving a few minutes early they could reduce their stress levels at the intersection. Um, I have already gone on record stating that the light uh, could just as easily increase congestion and just as easily increase the number of accidents as people try to beat the light. I see this on a daily basis on Route 1 when I commute to Saco. Um, just because we spent money on studies and we have some exposure towards the money that we've already spent does not mean we should throw additional funding at a project that does not uh, sit well with um, many people in the town and a project that has stretched out, as Jim pointed out, since 1968 uh, with main DOT recommendations going back as 1984. If it was so critical, it should have happened a long time ago. Um, and I question why now. Just as the U.S. debt uh, increased tentatively by $2 trillion this week, um, I question uh, our use of these funds where they could be put towards other uh, venues and I would suggest um, um, additional monies towards maintaining the infrastructure that continues to grow. Uh, if, if our monies are spent, they would need to be replaced. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Hello, uh, I'm Christopher Straw. I reside at 597 Shore Road. I have two points that I would like to make. Uh, the first is I personally am opposed to the light, and I think that we should not go forward with it. That being said, I also recognize that there are a number of arguments in favor of it. This leads to my first and primary point, which is that this, everyone would agree this is a highly contentious issue. You, as the town council, do not necessarily have to vote on this issue. The reason that the town council exists is that we, the citizens, cannot come together on a regular basis to decide all the issues in front of the town. One option you have when faced with a highly contentious issue is that you can put this on the ballot and let us, the town citizens, decide. That being said, if you do choose to keep this issue to yourselves to make this decision, this leads to my second point. We, the town, have a constitution. It's called the Comprehensive Plan. I would ask that if you do choose to vote on this issue, rather than allow us to make the decision amongst ourselves at the ballot, that you first turn to the Comprehensive Plan, look at what it says on this issue, and use it to guide your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Hi, I'm Linda Johnson. I live at 1235 Shore Road. We also own the two buildings on either side of that property, one of which you will be uh, scraping down yet a little more in order to put this intersection in. We feel making a really unsafe, uh, untenable situation for the uh, building on the corner. It will put the road within a couple of feet, uh, and it's already very close, of the front porch. Um, You've heard all of our arguments before. We agree with the people who have spoken ahead of us that now's not the time, and it hasn't seemed to be the time since 1968. Um, let's see, I was a junior in college in 1968. That's a long time ago. I'm a grandmother now. Uh, the town doesn't want this. We still don't want it. In talking with people all over town and the groups that have gone out to the transfer station and have talked to people, overwhelmingly people have told us, we don't want it. We don't need it. Uh, since our time is so limited here tonight to speak, and it's great that all these people have shown up, I would just like to ask how many of you are for the, the traffic light? The, who are here the, excuse me, the comments should be addressed through the chair. Would you ask them how many are for it? I think it, I'm we're not having you. an opportunity I'm allowing for you. all of us to talk. I'm allowing you to speak. Thank you. How many of you are no. for the no. traffic light? No, no. I'm allowing you to, to make your comments, but not to speak to the audience. Ah, I see. Okay. So we have just a couple of spots here, and then it's all over, and all these people who came out today to express their opinions are not going to get a chance to do that. Excuse me, we had a public hearing on this in November 2000. No kidding. <laughs> I've been at every one of them, and People we feel that we, we just haven't been heard as much as we'd like to. It's been very clear at every one of those meetings the majority of people have been against this, and yet the 
town keeps tabling it and putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. So I hope uh, either let's have it go to referendum and let's have all of us decide or let's cut our losses now and say this is not a project that needs to be done now. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Forever. Thank you very much, councillors. My name is Mary Ann Lynch. I live at 2 Old Colony Lane, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight and the opportunity that I have had on countless occasions to speak to you about this issue. So I, no matter um, how you vote tonight, I personally want to say that I appreciate your efforts and um, I feel that I've been heard whether or not you agree with me. Uh, that said, I really just have a couple of points to make. First of all, we, people keep talking about a light and I just want to emphasize that it is not just a light. It is a comprehensive improvement to traffic and pedestrian flow in town center. It will tighten up the intersection. It, there will actually be less pavement for pedestrians to cross. Um, there will be marked intersections. Um, second, I mentioned it was a comprehensive improvement to town center. It is, and I want to point this out to the earlier speaker, it was recommended in our comprehensive plan. A, a document that was put together by probably 20 citizens working over two years and adopted by council after much thought. So I would encourage you um, or encourage the manager maybe to find the citation. It was recommended in the comprehensive plan. Lastly, con councillors, I just want to point out to you that you have unrebutted professional studies establishing the need for these improvements. You have a large federal grant to pay for these improvements. Improvements which, again, have been professionally recommended for 20 years. You can do it now with the help of this large federal grant, or you can turn the money back, and it will be built later after someone is hurt. I can tell you I'm very glad for the success of Jonesy's, but I can tell you anecdotally that intersection has gotten much worse since Jonesy's went in. Uh, and we in the town benefit by Jonesy's. We've got this great price war for gas. We've got a wonderful place for food and pizza. But it has greatly increased the amount of traffic moving in and out. Lastly, I just want to address the issue of um, whether or not it's a popular thing to do. I know you all take very seriously um, the concept and importance of representative government. It's paramount. But there are some things, and I think the traffic light is among them, traffic safety is among them, um, that should not be decided based on a popularity con contest. And this is particularly the case, I think, when the majority of the traffic goes along the north-south axis unimpeded. Those of us in the minority who have to travel on the east-west access to get our children to schools, to go to the library, look to you to protect the minority when all the professional advice that you've been given supports that approach. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Marianne. We do have a couple minutes left in our 15-minute uh, allocation, Carol. So. Okay. Thank you very much for this opportunity to once again address this issue, and I've been here before. Speaking on, on the traffic light, um, I still think that this is not a needed traffic uh, solution to this intersection. Um, I think to solve a problem that's based on a problem that's 20 minutes, two times a day, um, and yet we'd be sitting at traffic and w wasting gas and impeding the flow for the entire day. Um, I think that we've already put in one traffic light, two traffic lights is overkill. Um, I think there have not been any serious issues at this intersection, but there have been issues since we put in the, the traffic light at the school with, I think it's four accidents, and some of them have sent people to the hospital. It's a given that when you put in a traffic light, you will have more accidents. And I know safety is an issue for all of you to consider, but I wouldn't want to have on my back um, four or five new accidents that would not have happened at this intersection by putting in a traffic light. I really think that 25 miles an hour through, this, through the business section has not been tried. 
It came up many times when I was on the town council. We were told that because it's a route numbered um, state road that we would not be able to lower it to 25 in the, in the business area and yet other towns have done it. Many other towns have 25 miles an hour through their business sections and I think that calms things down so that people, if there are people turning, they can react. Um, the sources of your, where your, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, we've used up our 15 minutes. I would ask the council if they have, if there's any desire to suspend the rules of the council to hear more speakers. Uh, If there is, would somebody please speak up? I think we, we know the arguments well. I don't feel like we need more information. We've had 250 emails or, or thereabouts, and I've read them all. I'm sure the rest of the council have said I don't feel, I, we've heard the pros and cons. I think we need to move forward, but that's my opinion. Hearing no other desire to uh, extend comments, I'll declare the public comment uh, segment ended. Um, what I would now do is to entertain a motion uh, to remove this item from the table. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous. Would uh, someone like so? Would someone like to begin discussion or put a motion on the floor so that we can discuss it? Let's go home, <laughs> uh, Chairman. I'd be happy to put a motion on the table, though I haven't drafted one, but I'll try to come up with something. Uh, I would move that the uh, town move forward with the plans for the town center intersections uh, improvements, which would include the traffic light, and authorize uh, the town manager to solicit bids uh, for this project. I second the motion. Moved and seconded. Um, now we can talk about it. Discussion on the motion? Uh, well, yeah, discussion on the motion. S see, seeing, well, David? Um, I uh, want to speak in support of the motion that I just made, and I know it's not going to be very popular because I have certainly heard from a number of citizens over the last few weeks, uh, and I think it, a lot of this boils down to change is difficult, um, and when you're spending money on a traffic light, it's not, frankly, very exciting. Uh, if you are uh, a homeowner, which most of the people in this room certainly are, and you're faced with the prospect of having to replace your roof, you don't get particularly excited about spending several thousand dollars for a new roof, but it's a necessary part of maintaining the structural integrity of your home. And in looking at the town center intersection, I think that is clearly an area of our town that needs improvement. And uh, we have had study after study after study that has come down in favor of signalization. And I am willing to go along with the conclusions of those studies and move forward with not only a traffic light, but with also the realignment of uh, Shore Road, Scott Dyer Road, uh, so that they come in uh, and form essentially a, a, a true intersection, and it will, in my view, create a safer intersection. Um, I have walked in the town center many times over the years. My family moved to Cape Elizabeth in 1978. Uh, I moved back here with my own family in 1993. And any time I have the uh, experience of walking across Route 77, I don't feel particularly safe. And if I had children uh, who lived, and I didn't live too far from the town center, I wouldn't feel particularly good about sending them in to the town center intersection to navigate that roadway. The town center is clearly not pedestrian friendly. And uh, I laid all this out in an email that I sent to a number of people who didn't agree with me, uh, and I thank those who responded very respectfully back, even though they still disagree with me. Um, but in our, in our comprehensive plan, w there's actually reference to uh, promoting an identifiable town center that includes a village feeling, mixed retail uses targeted to residents, 
a pedestrian inviting environment, a common meeting place, visual vitality, and linkages to the town's open space and school assets. In my view, and I know reasonable minds can disagree, but in my view, having an intersection that works for both cars and pedestrians will meet this goal set forth in our comprehensive plan. And I believe that echoes the master plan for the town center, uh, which uh, th those studies date back to the early 1990s. Um, I also believe that a town center intersection, a reconfigured the way that has been recommended here, will lay, lay the groundwork for future projects. And I got a lot of flack about that too. What are you nuts, Mr. Sherman? We can't spend $7 million on a new library or a million dollars on a short road pathway. But inevitably, there is going to be a change near the town center intersection. I hope someday it'll be a new library because that would be a huge benefit for our town. Uh, at that point, as part of the planning board approval process, the town, which would be the applicant for a new library, would most likely have to put in a new light. So the price tag goes from six or seven million dollars to nine or ten million dollars. The Shore Road Pathway, I think, is a great idea, and I know that's for next month's discussion, but if we go forward with that, hopefully with a lot of private funding or grant money, uh, we're dumping a lot of pedestrians then into a town center that simply doesn't work. In my view, this will ha have a, a huge benefit to the, to the town center. And of course, there's the issue of traffic flow and traffic safety. I never thought I'd be one of those parents who would drop my kids off at the high school on the way to work. I always made fun of people who did that. You know, they should take the bus. Uh, but now I got the reality of teenagers, and, and here I am, dropping my kids off at the school on the way to, to work. Um, if you see what happens at that intersection in the morning, it is nightmarish. And uh, people are going to make, continue to make uh, unsafe decisions, trying to get out. And I know we all should be courteous and obey the tr rules of traffic, but you know, it's, just, it's not realistic. We need to improve the traffic flow in that area. Um, so, I mean, I could go on and on. I, I think we've explored other options, they've been considered, they've been rejected. I think now is the time for the town council, like it or not, to pull the trigger and do this. And it's not a happy time, it's a lot of money, but I think in the long run we're all going to feel much better off that we've done this. Thank you, Dave. Ann? Um, first of all, I want to thank all the people who have contacted me to let me know, to let me know what their views are on the town center intersection. The great majority were thoughtful and gave calm and cogent reasons for why they opposed or favored a traffic light at the town center intersection. However, I admit I was somewhat dismayed by the very small minority of citizens who got carried away by this subject. And I know it's an important subject, but some of them got carried away and spread misinformation and rumors, gave rude or sarcastic input and even left anonymous messages on my home answering machine. These tactics have no place in civil, civic discourse. Bullying, fear-mongering, spreading disinformation, making unfounded assumptions and snide remarks about others' motivations and interests, anonymous calls, all of these are remarkably inefficient and ineffective in persuading people to one's point of view I basically discount such input. And I must stress, however, that that was a very small minority of people who called or emailed. Most people were great, whether they agreed with me or disagreed with me. I try to focus on our common goals and desires, principal among them to maintain our community as the great place it is to live, to work, and to raise our kids. CAPE is a community of neighbors and close associations and as David said, reasonable people can disagree on issues, especially a close one like the town center intersection. But that doesn't mean that we can't all live together peaceably. We need to focus on moving forward toward our common objectives, especially in this very difficult economic environment. So there's my preachiness out of the way. Um, <clears throat> the guiding principle I follow when making decisions on the town council is to first get the facts and then weigh the pros and cons. I also try to make financial decisions in the context of other important competing needs of citizens. First, the facts. And um, <coughs> this may take a couple minutes, but 
with the chair's indulgence, I would like to clear up some questions and concerns that many people have asked me about either uh, in person or via email or calling me. First of all, why is the town council even considering changes at this intersection? As Jim said earlier, for, ten, for the 10 years I've been on the council and for long before that, there have been numerous traffic studies, citizen committees, citizen petitions, public hearings, and complaints by town residents about automobile and pedestrian traffic flow at that intersection. So that's why the, the council has continued to talk about it. What do those traffic analyses and studies show? According to the 2003 Wilbur Smith study, there have been crashes at that corner, but it is not what MDOT calls a high crash location. A traffic light, according to that study, is warranted based on four-hour vehicular volume totals, and especially on peak hour totals, which means wait times, basically, at the, counter, at the corner. A traffic light is not warranted based on pedestrian volumes, school crossings, or crash experience. And page 10 of that Wilbur Smith intersection improvement study says, quote, the satisfaction of a traffic signal warrant or warrants shall not in itself require the installation of a traffic control signal. According to this 2003 study, the estimated cost of the intersection changes back then was $290,000. That's the total price, not just the local share. In 2006, that went to $437,000. In 2007, it went to $880,000. The latest estimate, and I'm mentioning these numbers because people have quoted me wildly varying numbers. The latest estimate of all the changes, including a light, new crosswalks, reconfiguring the intersection, adding turning, turning lanes, getting rights of way, and landscaping was $1.08 million although that estimate was done when prices were at their highest. Today's cost could be somewhat lower, but we don't know for sure. Traffic studies, some have said there are no guarantees. Well, traffic studies and traffic engineers cannot make promises that any intersection change will increase or decrease safety. Obviously, MDOT doesn't make plans that they think are going to increase danger, but they can't guarantee any outcomes of changes. Another more recent traffic analysis was done in 2007 by the Traffic Calming Road Safety Working Group. That's a citizen group. They held a lot of meetings. They consulted with professionals. They had a public hearing, one of many opportunities for public input, and they put on a public design workshop at which they endorsed a roundabout for that corner. The CFA wait time study quoted in a local flyer has not, to my knowledge, been made available to the council. As far as I know, this was not a professional traffic study. Rather, its conclusions were based on one or two Cape for All members watching the intersection with a stopwatch for an unknown period. So several people have asked me what the CFA study was, and that's my understanding of what it was. I may have it wrong, but it hasn't been shared with the council. So anyway, what's the deal with the Cape High School light? Isn't it causing problems? That traffic light was formally requested by the school board on March 8, 2004, after many, many, many parent complaints and concerns about traffic safety. It was mandated, and I stress mandated, by the planning board in 2004 as part of the high school building renovation project. Like any private enterprise, the town should be following its own rules on zoning when doing building projects. So for the high school renovation to take place, that light had to go in. The light is pre up there is pressure strip activated. It turns the light on Route 77 red only when traffic's trying to exit the driveway. As far as I know, the light has not increased the incident of crashes. There's been no formal study don't know, done that I know about, so anything said on that issue is only conjecture. Another question, why doesn't the council lower the speed limit on Route 77? Route 77 is a state highway, and thus the state, not the town council, controls the speed limit. My understanding is that MDOT has refused a number of requests from the town so far to lower the limit. That's not to say we can't ask again, but in any event, the, count, the town cannot just mandate a speed limit change. And I must note that some citizens have written me that they do not want a lower limit. I know a lot of people have said they want it 
traffic to be slower there, but a lot of people apparently don't. Fifth, why don't we do a roundabout? The council looked at that very carefully, rejected it for several reasons. It would have to be built big to state highway standards, and this would mean taking by eminent domain a significant amount of private property at the intersection, including part of the Balfour Real Estate Building and part of the Johnson's property, the Wellness Center, next to Jonesy's. That would certainly destroy much of the village feel of the town, as well as being just as costly as a light. Also, a roundabout, in my opinion, wouldn't really help with pedestrians crossing the roads. Why not use police or crossing guards there? It's unsafe to stand in the middle of a state highway where the traffic uh, is going at 35 miles an hour, especially in bad weather. Um, tying up police, our first responders, they're the EMTs first on the scene in our town every day would be impractical, in my opinion. Fourth, don't you think traffic lights wreck rural character? Well, I would argue this is debatable. First, the center of town is not rural, in my opinion. As noted in the town center plan and in the comprehensive plan, it is a village feel that is desirable. Some would say a traffic light would promote slowing down traffic, increasing pedestrian usage in a village feel, um, more like Yarmouth. Some would disagree. But the days of rural character in the center of town are long gone, I think. Why don't we try other cheaper and less intrusive traffic calming or safety measures? We've already tried red crossing flags. I'm sure everybody's noticed those. Um, I've carried them across the street myself. We've repainted crosswalks. We've rerouted school traffic through Jordan Way, though that was temporary. We've used radar speed indicators. We've tried more signs. We've had citizen working groups to get ideas. Other things we could consider, lowering the speed limit, if we could get the state to do so the police officers and crossing guards, which I think is unsafe, increasing enforcement of the speed limit, which is tough with only two officers. Um, there's a cost and service issue there. Narrow the road to decrease speed. These are all made, all these things are list, uh, that I list are from citizen suggestions. Narrow the road, it would cost a ton of money. It would be a bottleneck. It's a, the state controls the road. A lot of people don't want the lower speed. Put in speed bumps, you can't plow over them. Have more sidewalks, that's already a town center policy. Put in flashing lights at the crosswalks. Some would argue about the village feel of that or the cost. Mandate more kids ride school buses to decrease the car traffic. That's a school board policy, the council can't mandate that. Increase citizen courtesy and patience. I wish this were under my control, but you know, I, I don't think the council can control that or do more traffic studies, which I think there have been many with similar conclusions. So those are all the facts. I know that was rather long-winded, but there's been so much misinformation around. I appreciate everybody listening patiently because I wanted to get some of the facts out there. So where am I on this issue? In April 2004, I voted for the Cape Elizabeth High School light based on safety concerns and my wanting to the high school renovation project to go forward. I remain convinced that that was the right thing to do. At the same meeting, I voted against moving forward with the town center light because I wanted to see if and how traffic changed after the high school light was done. Tonight I'm casting my vote based on weighing the following factors. Convenience is the first one, smooth traffic flow. According to the traffic studies, service at the intersection is level F, which is failing at peak hours in terms of service wait times. Safety, that's the second factor. I'm sympathetic to the safety concerns some citizens have expressed. However, the, however, the data also shows the corner is not a high crash site. Third, fairness. I do not buy the idea that we should do projects strictly based on how many people use something. Many decisions are rightfully made for the sake of a minority, even though they don't have much impact on um, the majority in terms of them using that. Some examples in this town are schools, paving any particular road, the sewer system, the library, Fort Williams, the community center. Just because everyone doesn't benefit directly is not a reason to keep from doing a project or providing a service. The village character, uh, 
rural character thing is. There's good arguments on both sides. That one's a toss-up for me. Cost. This is a big one. Whether the light costs 1.1 million or whether it costs 900,000, our local share is a lot of money. The manager has a plan so that we will not have to borrow any more money to do the intersection if the council decides to go forward. I appreciate his creativity, but I'm also very concerned about time, town finances. Given one, all the other possible competing projects in town, there's other town center improvements, a short road path, a new library, and there's plenty of other projects around. And secondly, the staggering pressure that reduced revenues will have on our town. The municipal budget shrank last year, and the town council had to make difficult decisions to consolidate dispatching and cut back in other ways. In the coming year, when the federal stimulus money runs out and the state cuts aid for our schools, we will be facing grave challenges. And if the economy continues to be troubled, and if the state referendum questions on the Tabor and automobile excise tax uh, measures pass this fall, our town will be in a world of hurt. I believe it is fiscally prudent to conserve our resources if we can. Impact on neighbors is something else to think about. People living near the light, as judged by their addresses, are split for and against the project. I was surprised by the people who lived near the project um, that they were not unanimous in their opinion. Owners of a number of businesses at the corner are worried they could lose part of their property by eminent domain when rights of way are purchased. The impact on future projects that David mentioned, that's something to think about, and the impact on users of the intersection, and that's most people in town. I do not make decisions based on email counts, but I don't ignore people's views either. This is a matter where everyone writing to me uses the intersection to a greater or lesser degree. Their conclusions vary based on where they live in town, how often and when they go through the intersection, their driving skills and their patience level. But they are informed opinions, so I take them into account. And I would note that about 85% or more of the emails um, and calls that I've received have been against the light. So my conclusion, the safety data indicated this intersection is not a high crash site. If I believed it were a clear danger, I would be inclined to support a light. But that's not what the traffic studies show. Therefore, we're talking about convenience, village character, and impacts on frequent users as reasons to do the project. Balanced against those factors are impacts on immediate business neighbors, opinions from the majority of citizens who use the intersection, and most overwhelmingly, cost. I do not feel that it would be fiscally prudent in this economic environment to go forward with this project, and thus I will be voting against it. I am sympathetic to citizens' concerns about the intersection, however, so I would support looking at other less expensive or intrusive measures that we could take to increase pedestrian friendliness. And I thank you for being so patient and listening to me, but I've responded to over 200 emails briefly, um, per all personally, but I felt it was important to get a lot of the facts out and to explain my, my reasoning since so many people have have very heated opinions about this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ann. Paul. Thanks, Jim. Well, <clears throat> I wasn't sure where you're going, Ann. But, uh, it's, it's, it's a close you, one. You, you, it, it shows what, what Ann's comments demonstrate it is um, the culmination of many years of careful consideration that we all have um, been involved with. And I, I went back and forth on this light. I really did. I wasn't sure if it was the right thing to do and to fix the intersection. But as I looked into it more carefully, I realized that um, the changes that have taken place and that will take place in the future will permanently affect the citizens in the community. So what I want to do is I want to address a few of the issues that came up uh, that were common in some of the emails that we received. First of all, the town center intersection with the light 
will increase taxes and town debt. That, that was a common theme in some emails. That is not true. First of all, the dollars have already been set aside. They've already been borrowed. It's already in the coffers. And it's set aside for transportation. So the fact is, is that we already have the money to do the project. Second, the project is too expensive. Right now, we are experiencing the lowest construction costs we've had in quite a while. When, oil, when gasoline went to $4 a gallon and oil, the oil prices went with it, the construction costs went through the roof. Right now, we have very low construction costs, relatively speaking. We also have federal and state grant money worth $350,000 dedicated to construction. If we turn that money down, it will go to another construction project in another town. It will not go back to reduce your taxes. Three, no safety issues exist at the intersection. It's not needed. To answer that, I looked back at what we had available, and we have four independent studies that show an F rating for the Scott Dyer and the Shore Road intersection with Route 77. I'm not a an engineer, I'm not a traffic engineer, and I won't pretend to be one, but I trust that they're doing their job appropriately, and when four independent studies come to the same conclusion, I think we have an issue. Also, uh, the business on the corner, Jonesy's, had a change in the nature of business. It used to be a, a service station with gasoline. Now it's a, it's a gasoline station, a convenience store with gasoline. The convenience store is attracting a lot more um, traffic. Uh, cars, people going in for their shot of caffeine, and children, children going in after school, trying to cross the street to get pizza or whatever, a snack. And I've seen a lot more uh, activity and a lot of close calls that make me very concerned for the children's safety. We also, in the community, have a greater emphasis on walking to school and riding your bike to school. Well. I lived on Shore Road. I was always nervous about that for my children. And I think we'll, moving forward, without a, uh, an improvement in that intersection, that's very hazardous activity for children. And that's unfortunate. We, shouldn't, we should be promoting that sort of activity. I think right now, if you look at the town center, we're in, a very, we're in an era of low economic activity. We all know this. Uh, this has resulted in less traffic. When the economy improves and when the storefronts fill up, when we build a building next to, or our building is built next to the town hall, you're going to see a significant increase in activity. So today is not a good measure of what it's going to look like in the future, which means it's going to be less safe. We just completed a study on the potential for a new library. The new library will require traffic light, as it's been stated. We have to put a traffic light in later. It's going to cost us a lot more money, and there will be no federal or state grant money to go along with that in all likelihood. My personal experience, I lived on Shore Road for five years. We had five vehicles and five drivers. A lot of activity through that intersection, so I have a lot of personal experience and a lot of close calls. And I'm a very good driver. I haven't had an accident in years, decades. But you know, when you have three teenage drivers, you, you've got to be concerned. And, the, and all of these children deserve, and all drivers deserve to be protected by proper public safety measures. I was in a business on the corner of Shore Road and Route 77, 2003, 2004. There hardly was a day that went by where I didn't hear skidding tires and often a, a loud crash and I would go to the front and look, and there, sure enough, there was an accident. Now, often these crashes were resulted in um, no significant injuries, but eventually we will have significant injuries and death if we don't do something, in my opinion. If we do this intersection improvement and we add a traffic light, I think the result will be improved safety for pedestrians, for cyclists, for motorists, it will slow traffic, and it will also move us forward in uh, completing our comprehensive plan. So I will be voting in favor of this measure because I think it's the right thing to do.
Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> David? Thank you, Jim. I wish I could say I wrote Anne's comments for her, but I didn't. <laughs> but she certainly helped shorten <clears throat> the need for some of my recitation of some of the background facts. And thank you for so logically laying out some of the background. I think it's helpful not only for the council, but it's certainly helpful for the public. So thank you, Anne. One of the interesting things to me about reading through the couple hundred emails that we received, um, in addition to Anne's observation that all of the people who drove through the intersection or who drive through the intersection or who commented on it are familiar with it. People are all commenting based on their own experience. But one of the fascinating things about reading all of these emails is that from one email to the next, you'd think that people were describing entirely different intersections. Um, we hear from people who talk about the nightmare of getting through, and we hear from people who say that they've been going through the intersection for 20 plus years, thousands of times, at all times of day, going every possible direction, and they've never seen a problem. Um, it's hard to know how to balance all that out. Um, I drive through it every day as well. We all drive through it every day. So it is, they are all informed opinions that we're receiving. When we had our last public hearing in November um, of 2008, um, I had made a motion after the public hearing to terminate further intersection design um, and for us to reimburse uh, the main Department of Transportation for its expenses incurred up to that date and the motion provided for us to, um, re to notify the Portland Area Comprehensive Transportation System, what we refer to as PACS, um, that the town was declining acceptance of the grant. Now, Mary Ann Lynch reminded me before this evening's hearing, because she served on the council with me for several years, that I had always said that I reserved the right to change my mind. Up until the moment of truth, the moment of, of vote. And I have always reserved the right to change my mind. In this case, I'm not changing my mind. Um, I feel the same way today that I did in November of 2008. <laughs> Um, and I will explain some of my reasons for why I haven't changed my mind since that time. Um, the primary consideration for me um, as is, is much the same as it was as described by Councilor Swift Kayata, and that is the cost. Um, for the town in this economic environment, to commit itself to spending $700,000 on a traffic light when if we were to take a ranking of priorities of what the most compelling spending needs are for us, um, we would be hard pressed to find the traffic light or the Shore Road, Scott Dyer 77 intersection. I can't imagine that it would make the top five and I'm not sure that it would make the top 10 in the ranking of priorities of where we need to spend money today. Uh, we have a tremendous infrastructure of buildings and vehicles and roadways that we have deferred maintenance on for years through the last several years of budget cycles. And the town manager has done an admirable job reminding us each budget year of what needs to be done, what needs to be spent that isn't being spent. And um, we could all create a long list of places where we could spend that $700,000, where we'd probably get a much better return on our investment than reconfiguring that intersection today. Uh, we're launching into a whole new era of trying to become energy efficient with tremendous um, potential expenditures available to us that have the potential to provide a great return on investment. Um, and I think the money would be better spent in that circumstance. People do say that if we don't reconfigure the intersection now, 
we'll lose the $365,000 that is available to us through federal funding through the PACS grant. Um, that is likely true, but it's not free money. And we have the same obligation to exercise prudent judgment in spending money that comes through the state government or the federal government as we have with spending our own dollars. Um, and I simply can't justify spending those state and federal dollars on a project that is not at the top of our list for priority spending. And I almost hate to say this, but I'm going to. But I assure you that this will be the only time that anybody will ever hear me turn to Sarah Palin for guidance. <laughs> <laughs> so it's with great reluctance that I even head down this road. But during last year's campaign, when discussing the use of federal funds for the infamous bridge to nowhere in Alaska, she claimed to have told Congress thanks but no thanks, um, when the truth seemed to have been that she actually had lobbied very heavily in Congress for the funds, but didn't get them for other reasons. Um, but I encourage us to say to PACs in the most appreciative way possible, thanks but no thanks, that the money is not free money. Um, I think that we as elected officials have an obligation occasionally to not succumb to the tremendous allure of so-called money raining down from heaven that seems to be free and saying thank you, and if we don't spend it, somebody else will. What I'd like the real story to be here is not that the council said no to rebuilding the intersection, but that the council as a group of elected officials said no to this so-called free money. Um, and this is probably wishful thinking on my part, but I'd like to think that more elected bodies, more elected officials will with greater frequency say no to expenditures because of this mounting multi-trillion dollar debt and certainly $365,000 doesn't make a bit of difference in that multi-trillion dollar debt that's going to be passed on to the next generation. But, as we all know, every little bit helps and we all have to do our own little part. And this is my part in saying thanks, but no thanks. And if any of the members of the press here say that I quoted Sarah Palin, <laughs> there will be trouble. You're not <laughs> Um, moving on, um, if pedestrian safety is the primary concern, and I think it is one of the driving concerns of the intersection, I think there are far more effective options available to us than we have tried so far. Um, we have made a few efforts, I won't call them token efforts, but they certainly aren't large efforts. Um, repainting a crosswalk and putting the red flags out were efforts, but we can do more there are certainly other options available. Um, I've shared some of those with the council by email. We have a, I'm not quite sure what the name of our town safety, our town center group is that Sarah Lennon will undoubtedly address. I'd like to give them an opportunity. They haven't even met yet to look at the intersection options. Um, I'd like to give them an opportunity to meet. I'd like them to have an opportunity to consider the various options before we commit to what I consider the most draconian and the most expensive option available, and that is spending uh, close to a million dollars in total funds to rebuild this intersection. Um, to the extent that some people have said that a traffic light might help foster a town center or village feel, you know, perhaps if you could hang a single four-way light in the middle of the intersection on a single wire, you might get a Mayberry USA feel, but that's not what it's going to be. Um, this is going to be eight lights, um, two in each direction, hanging off of two large cantilevered steel poles over the intersection, and there's nothing about that that is going to create a village feel. Um, I suppose the bottom line for me is that for the several hundred thousand dollar 
commitment of town funds and the total million dollar expenditure of all funds. Um, the return on investment that I would like to see from that money is simply not there, and I will therefore not be supporting uh, the motion to go forward with to go forward forward with further intersection design. Thanks, David. Sarah. It's a good thing you're not up for re-election. They'd be quoting you. Um, you know, I was at that design workshop that Saturday that went on for four or five hours, and. Um, I've thought about that a lot lately because I thought it was really exciting and interesting and energetic and people had a huge amount of passion and everyone rolled up, we took a tour of the center and then everyone rolled up his or her sleeves and sat down and we were allowed to design our own intersection in small groups. And people came up with really out of the box interesting ideas and they were very different. But, and then we all tap, tap them, taped them up in front and discussed them and voted. And it was interesting to me that every single design um, was filled with greenery and trees. And you know, some of them were almost whimsical. I remember Carl Pearson's was extremely interesting. But um, you know, it got at an essential craving that people were feeling, which was um, we don't want more asphalt. We don't want painted um, islands and left-hand turn lanes and, as David said, you know, scaffolding and ladders and lights. People were craving to, to bring the intersection down and make it feel human size. And um, I think nobody actually put a light in his or her design. There were four or five of them. And then we had to take stickers and put what our first choices were on each or what we liked best. And all the um, stickers would be focused on, again, the green areas and the design. And then we had to vote on one. And overwhelmingly, I think it was almost unanimous, people chose the roundabout. Um, which again was interesting to me because it was a solution that was not using a light. It was about redirecting traffic and again making it look pretty and pedestrian friendly and fitting in with the feel of cake. Unfortunately, we had that design um, workshop, I think, too late in the process because we had already have hired MDOT to be looking into the light option. And once we asked for a light and we got the state involved, that became a major um, infrastructure project because they felt they needed to align the roads. And that's why it ballooned into a million dollars. I think if we had left the light out of the picture, we could have had, as this group sort of showed, all kinds of really interesting solutions. So to me, um, in some strange way, we've gone about this backward. We should have involved more citizens earlier. Many of them had thought about it a lot, have extremely creative, interesting ideas and ideas that I think would work. So, Dave, when you say, I, I think we've explored all the other options, I actually disagree with that. I think we haven't explored any of them because the conversation was cut short. So, what I am hoping is that if this light and this infrastructure project, which seems unpopular on many levels, partly aesthetic, partly people are questioning whether it's gonna be better, partly, let's be frank and honest, it's just ugly, I think if, that does get turned down. I'm hoping that's not the end of the subject and the end of trying to make that fix this problem, which is a clear problem. Everybody acknowledges that. I hope it's the beginning of the conversation. Um, so what I would like to do, I, I'm gonna vote no for the light, but what I would like to do is seriously continue to try to, try to think about ways that this intersection can be safer, both for cars, to increase the level of service, but more importantly for pedestrians. And I have been traveling all over New England this summer and I've been looking at every single intersection I come to. And there are a lot of really lovely intersections that are very pedestrian friendly and that work really well for traffic. And I think Cape Elizabeth with all of its resources and all of the people who care about this and are interested in it can come up with a really good solution. Um, as David men mentioned, and I would just as an aside note that the level of service issue for me is slightly less important. The safety issue is, is paramount. Um, but I, I think that we can address the safety issue for pedestrians and bicyclists and even vehicles um, in these other ways. And I won't go down the long list that I have brewing in my head, but they start at something that seems relatively easy, like talking about the speed limit or perhaps narrowing some shoulders and adding some greenery. I think what people want is to tell 
people coming into the town, hey, this is a town center, it's rural, there's a school here. You know, many towns, even neighboring Portland, you get that feel. You're, you know you're coming into a town center, you know you should slow down, you know there's a school. That's a feeling we want to create. So um, we actually have formed a group, which we haven't met yet, but we're going to meet tomorrow. Um, and there's four of us. It's Mary Townsend, who lives right here in the center, Cynthia Dill, who lives right here in the center, um, and I know was in favor of the light. Um, and Tom Kinley, who I'm looking forward to meeting, and myself. And, um, you know, what I'm hoping our charge will be is to come up with a whole series, first of all, list the problems, and then come up with a whole series of suggestions or recommendations, varying from very easy to do and, and quick to something slightly more substantial. And that may be lighted, you know, lighted pedestrian walks, it may be rerouting traffic, it may be taking advantage of Hill Street, it may be adding some greenery, who knows? I don't know what we're allowed to do, I don't know what people want to do, but um, I'd like to come up with a draft of s many suggestions that have a lot of citizen input. I'd love to have an evening when all, any people who have passion about this can come in and give their great ideas. I know there are a lot of great ideas already out there because people have been thinking about this since at least 94 and then present that to the council to discuss and possibly pick and choose some that will be effective. I agree with David that so far nothing substantial has been done. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Honey? First of all, I'd like to thank Ann for giving the history. Because I, as a new person uh, here on the council, I, you know, I paid attention over the years, but not to the depth you uh, have to as you're sitting in the chair up there. Um, I received all of the emails, and I also have the privilege of getting to see uh, many citizens from Cape Elizabeth on a day-to-day -day basis because I'm kind of visible throughout the day. And I've had some wonderful conversations about uh, town center. And uh, what's great is when you can engage in a dialogue and, and really ask, tell me why you feel that way. And I've had some really great conversations. I will say right up front that um, Anne kind of encapsulated exactly how I feel, and that's that at this point in time, um, cost is my driving factor relative to my decision. And at this time, I don't feel that we can afford to expend dollars, um, even if some of those dollars are supposedly uh, available and there's no such thing as free money. Um, I think we need to be cognizant of what is facing us over the next uh, year to two years. I'm not looking forward to this next budget round. I mean, I lived through only one. I can't imagine what it's like living through 10 of them. Uh, but it's going to be challenging. I also feel very strongly that we haven't really established our set of requirements. And as a systems design person, I need to prioritize my requirement. What is the driver for what we're designing here? Is, is it about uh, pedestrians? Is it about traffic? Is it about accidents? What is it about? And with any set of requirements, there is many solutions. And so what might those solutions be? And I don't think, I, I truly agree with Sarah that have we really looked at all of the alternatives and solutions that are out there and what can we do in a cost-effective manner? And so at this point in time, I will be voting to not move forward with this project. Thanks, Penny. It's, uh, that kind of makes things academic, but uh, I, will, uh, I will make some comments. The issue has certainly been one of the most controversial, interesting, and challenging uh, in my term uh, as a town councillor. I do support the proposed improvements at the town center intersection for a number of reasons. Uh, many have been articulated, and I'll therefore abridge my comments uh, so we can get out of here at a decent hour. The first is the matter of conscience, which I cited previously. Um, it would be easy for me to stick my head in the sand and pretend that because uh, three independent uh, engineering studies didn't tell me what I wanted to hear, then there's no problem. But I can't do that. Uh, I've been maligned publicly for having a conscience that would tell me that, but I've got to tell you it's the only conscience I was ever given, and I'm not sure I have to apologize for it, so I won't. Um, 
Critics of the, proposed, uh, of the proposal cite that a poor safety record is not the reason for the, recommending, uh, for the recommendations in the three studies, principal studies. Technically, that's true. To date, neither the frequency of accidents nor their severity has apparently reached the threshold whereby the safety warrant uh, has been tweaked. But poor level of ser service leads to extended wait times, which leads to driver anxiety and frustration, which leads to mistakes particularly in an area of town uh, with a heavy concentration of our least experienced drivers. Critics have incised part of a recent observation from an MDOT engineer, and that is that a traffic signal will not guarantee safety. The entire observation was that there are no guarantees either way, with or without a signal. That's a little different. That's a rather innocuous uh, comment, but it's true. That there are no guarantees. But there is no ambig ambiguity in the intent of a red light, however. The intent is to lift the intersection from its F, uh, service level of service rating. The intent is safety, and the intent is to make drivers accountable for their own actions. Grossly understated in this debate, I think, has been the, the proposed improvements are much more than plunking down a traffic light in our town center, hence the hefty price tag. I'll say a little bit more about the price in a minute. In addition to vehicular traffic control, are the issues of pedestrian management, and of utility infrastructure uh, upgrade in the town center area. As Dave pointed out, both our town center master plan and our comprehensive plan have a shared vision uh, of the cultivation of a modest but vibrant mixed commercial residential presence in the town center. Sidewalks and improved sewer, stormwater, and water supply are integral to making this happen. Some critics have questions, questioned where the return on investment is for this project. I'd, su I'd submit that there may be significant return of investment in this uh, facet alone. The cost, it's significant. But the fact is we don't know what the cost will be until the project goes to bid. A budget cost has been assigned of $1.1 million. That budget figure was developed when the cost of petroleum, which is the main ingredient in asphalt, was much higher than it is today. The current construction bidding market, which is something that I have intimate fam familiarity, is incredibly competitive at the moment. Uh, the cost of borrowing, as we heard earlier in our refinancing of our, of our bond package, uh, is very attractive right now. And we have a state and federal government that are willing to contribute a significant share. No one's more aware of the challenges that, uh, currently, that the current economy has placed on households, businesses, and government entities than I am. But I'd suggest that it's precisely now as we're just beginning to see evidence of dawn following a very dark recession, that is the most opportune time to invest, whether in financial markets or in bonded construction product, projects. I'd submit that if we're willing to consider beyond the present, that we may not see the likes, uh, the, uh, it, we may not see the uh, uh, improvements, proposed improvements as affordable as they are today for a long, long time, if ever. My vote will reflect that belief. Key to my decision to support the proposal is trying to shed my myopia. We've now been debating this intersection for decades. Several town councils have wrestled with this in the past and have generally reached the same conclusions. The situation is not improved on its own, nor do I believe that it will improve without some serious help. I believe that now is the time to act. I believe it is the right thing to do, if not the popular thing. Even though, though I don't subscribe to the position taken by opponents, I certainly respect their position, and I hope they respect mine. Thank you. Dave? Just a, a point of clarification, um, because we, we had a discussion about the use of bonded funds uh, a couple of months ago. And my understanding, I wasn't on the council when the bond was approved for the town center improvements and other road construction projects, but I, my understanding was that those funds were earmarked towards the town center intersection. And although I suppose the town council, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, has a prerogative to take those funds and apply them to a new roof for the middle school, I think the council's general policy has been not to do that, it's to, to, to try to live up to the original purpose behind the bond and use it for the purpose for which it was approved. But, you know, so I'm not sure it's as, because I got a lot of emails saying, hey, we can use this money for textbooks, and, or, or 
and maybe we can use it for new vehicles, as, as Councillor Backer suggested. I'm just not sure it's quite that simple, but I, I'd love to get some clarification on that. Ann? Um, I was on the council back then, and my recollection, though sometimes imperfect, is that um, the bonds were dedicated to town center improvements. And I think many of us assumed uh, that it would be the intersection, but I think, I agree with you, I don't think textbooks is going to fall under that, but I think there are other things. But the manager may have light to shed on that. I, I assume town center infrastructure. Yeah, the original bond provisions had some monies for the town center improvements. It had for town center sidewalks and drainage. It had for new public works truck. It had some money for the high school traffic light. Uh, it had money for the Sperling Church work that's nearing completion and a couple of other small items. Uh, the bond is, whenever we structure bonds, because issues come up, we try to write them so that it does give the council some flexibility. In this, that is the case in this instance. Uh, the bonds do specifically allow the reallocation of monies uh, by the town council. And in fact, uh, in uh, January 2009, uh, the town council did uh, reallocate some of the monies. Uh, one it said, go ahead with the Spurring Church project. Two, the school board had a little bit of money go through it. There was some, the bleachers, the $150,000 contribution was involved as, as part of this bond. Pay the retainage off on that. Uh, spend money for roadway and parking lot infrastructure. That's been ongoing. A lot of that work's done. And then $300,000 was frozen to be used for what the council voted then was to be used for capital purposes recommended by the town manager and approved by the town council. And as I indicated in a memo of July 15th, uh, the 2000 bond unallocated amount uh, is now approximately uh, $430,926. Uh, and that money can be reallocated by the town council. It cannot be allocated, though, toward any item that doesn't have a useful life for the life of the bonds, uh, i.e. textbooks. Uh, you know, if, if the school board wishes to buy textbooks, they can do that with the monies that have already been appropriated uh, to the school department. And I'm not advocating. I know that. Uh, even though I am contributing personally to the purchase of textbooks, I'm not advocating the use of bond money for that purpose. But I just wanted to address that issue because it came up in a lot of emails. Um, just two very quick points. Um, although I know I'm going to be in the minority on this issue, I do hope that the enthusiasm that Councillor Lennon feels uh, for her committee that I think was appointed, I'm not even sure when it was appointed, but I know they're meeting for the first time tomorrow. Um, better late than never. I hope they can harness the enthusiasm we've gotten from the citizens and come up with a plan that will be more accepted by citizens. I, I guess we'll see, but uh, I, I wish them all the best. Um, and I disagree with one of the one gentleman who said, put it up to a referendum. I think that this is the town council's job to make these decisions. And even though, you know, I, I'm in the minority, I think we we have to do our job and, and vote one way or the other on this issue. Next, Dave. Yeah. Further discussion on the motion, Paul? Yeah. It looks like this motion will be defeated, but I would say that um, these infrastructure needs are not going to go away, and we're going to have to address them at some point in time. It's going to be a lot more expensive, whether it involves light or not. There are other issues that you don't see when you drive through the intersection that are going to have to be addressed under the ground, the stormwater issues. Very costly to address these issues, to the, the time you do that is when you're, you know, re-engineering the intersection. But those problems, those issues are not going to go away, and they're going to get more expensive, and we haven't addressed any of the safety concerns. So even though I'm in the minority and I know it's not a popular issue, I, I think this w would have been the right time to move forward. But we will do what we do. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a majority vote. Sure. So I just have one quick thing. I feel like we sort of did put it to referendum. I mean, this seems like democracy is working because, um, you know, we're, rep we're elected representatives. And my experience in three years has been that, in general, the majority tends to um, be reflected in the majority of what the councils choose. In other words, I'm trying to say, I think we take citizen input extremely seriously. I mean, everyone here read every single email. We took that heavily into account. And so, um, 
you know, I'd like to think if we're doing our job really well, we don't have to put things out to a referendum because it becomes a mini referendum here with the seven people. I guess that's the optimal form of democracy. And I just like to say, I think it kind of worked. Thanks, so. <laughs> In its own messy way. <laughs> Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion. Uh, what is the motion? The motion was to move ahead with the project. In favor. Three in favor. Opposed? Four opposed. The motion is defeated. Um, again, thank you to the public for their input. Uh, should, you, should we have a motion to, similar to what Councillor Backer had? Oh, it's going to be my Oh, okay. I'm sorry. What? I uh, thought you were closing the meeting. So. No, no. Okay. Uh, but I would uh, order the manager to inform the uh, order. <laughs> yes, the main Department of Transportation and PACS that we respectfully uh, say thank you for their offer of funding, but we will not use it at this I, time. I think that was implicit in the council decision. Yes, David. Okay. Well, I was just going to ask if you wanted a motion along those lines, but if, you, if that's not necessary, then I, I'd feel. I, I personally would feel better if we had a motion, just to make it really clear cut, okay. if that's okay. okay. So I'd like to hear David's motion. David? Well, in that case, sort of modeled after what was um, on our uh, November, in our November minutes, um, I, I move that the council uh, direct the town manager to notify the main department of transportation that the town of Cape Elizabeth wishes to terminate design of proposed improvements to the intersection at the center of town and request the town manager to notify PACS that the town of Cape Elizabeth declines the PACS authorized grant of $363,566 for, for improvements to the town center intersection and that the council further authorize the town manager to expend not to exceed $25,000, I think that's the right number, from the 2008 bond issue to reimburse MDOT for design costs to date as the town is 100% responsible for design costs for MDOT projects terminated by municipalities. Just, it, we're not 100% responsible. It's, it's as we're responsible for the local share. That's, okay. Yeah. Well, then let's just cut it off at okay. twenty-five thousand dollars from the two thousand eight bond issue to reimburse MDOT for design costs to date. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor of the motion. It's, it's a done deal for me. Can opposed, I vote against opposed, it? <laughs> opposed. Two. Show the vote to be five to two. Um, we offer a second opportunity for citizens to speak to items not on the agenda this evening. Seeing none, uh, I would announce, uh, before we adjourn, I would announce uh, future meetings and events on September Excuse me. Sarah Lennon had mentioned something about the charge of her committee, and I don't know what the charge of her committee is, frankly. And I, is, it, is it as all-encompassing as what she is envisioning? I'm now the benevolent dictatorship of the no, town. Let me, could I? <laughs> the, the, the charge to the committee is very limited. Uh, <laughs> it, it simply was to evaluate the pedestrian changes, the flags, the improvements that were made over the course of last year. I think, you know, what would be good is to have that committee meeting to see if they want to recommend back to the council an enlargement of their charge. I think that's a fine idea because it seems to me the charge should be enlarged in light of tonight's discussion. I mean, can we just enlarge it now and vote on it? I uh, would recommend that you, charges need to be very careful, and I'd recommend that people have a chance to see it in writing and the committee have a chance to discuss it, and that the council has a chance to review it before any meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, upcoming meetings. Uh, September 3rd, we have a town council workshop uh, to discuss uh, improvements to the Thomas Memorial Library. Uh, that is at 7.30, and it is at the Thomas Memorial Library and not in the council chambers, as is common, or, or in the Jordan Conference Room. It's at the library. It will begin with a tour of the current facility. On September 12th, um, 52 of Maine's lighthouses will be open to the public. It's a Saturday. Um, our own Portland headlight will be open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. 
I'd encourage anyone who hasn't uh, been up in the light tower to take this opportunity. It's a, a great view. Um, September 14th is our next town council meeting. We have three important uh, public hearings scheduled having to do with the Goddard Mansion, Shoreland Zoning, and the Shore Road Pathway. Uh, action may or may not be taken on, uh, on that evening, and we'll go as far as we can. I expect a lot of public comment on those hearings, and it may be a late meeting, uh, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. And our October meeting uh, should be noted is on October 14th, which is a Wednesday, uh, due to the Monday that week being a holiday. So, can I just add one thing? I'd encourage anyone considering attending the September 3rd meeting at the library to check the website the afternoon. We, we've, we have a mold mitigation issue that we need to address at the library. Uh, you know, it's no secret we've had a record rainfall this summer, and uh, the library has been a victim of. Uh, get some old issues there. But do you think it'll go forward regardless? It just might be somewhere. We're hoping that the company comes in and does the mitigation uh, prior to the September 3rd meeting. But if we couldn't do it in the library, we'll It'll be, be done here. We've reserved we'll space here as a backup. Okay, so the time. It'll be that night no matter what, but the, just check the website. Okay. We'll send you an email, but any members of the public uh, will know better as we get closer to the date. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Everybody Second. moves. Everybody seconds. Second. All in favor? Everybody votes for it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you Sa all. Sarah, Sarah, what time and where is your meeting tomorrow? Four to five here. I don't know where. Uh, I told you. Thank you.